All right, good afternoon. I'd like to bring the regular afternoon meeting of Township Atlanta Council to order. And the first item is the adoption and receipt of the agenda items. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Fox and second by Councillor Whitmarsh. All those in favor? Opposed and carried. And a motion to adopt the minutes of the regular afternoon meeting of 20, November 27th and a special council meeting for budget purposes of December the 4th. Yeah, Councillor Arneson, second by Councillor Whitmarsh. Any errors or omissions? All those in favor? Opposed and carried. And we move on to motion to resolve into special closed meeting uh, for the items on the agenda and on table. Could I have a motion, please? Mm -hmm. Councillor Qualley, second by Councillor Sparrow. And I would like to add an intergovernmental and a legal. And Councillor Richter. Yeah, I object to several items on this agenda being in camera. Item C1, item F1, item F3, item H1, and item H2. Oh, sorry. Slow down a little bit. C1, F1. Hey, F3, H1, and H2. F3, H1. H2. Okay, we can discuss that in, when we get into closed. Uh, that was everything. Council Long? Well, I was going to add a legal item, Your Worship. Legal? Okay, Long legal. Okay. Okay, with that, uh, show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed? Councillor Richter is opposed to going to closed, and uh, motion carries. Thank you. And we now resolve it to closed. Being the regular afternoon meeting of the Township Atlantic Council. And the next item on the agenda uh, is reports to Council. We have um, F1 is the policy to retain a single family dwelling in lieu of temporary access mobile home. The reports attached. Uh, could I have a motion, please? Councillor Fox, seconder. Councillor Qualley. Discussion on F1. Councillor Davis. Sorry. It's okay. Take your time. Okay. Um, uh, F1. On uh, 4.18, a, a renewal fee is to be paid on an annual basis to retain the uh, retain the exiting the exiting dwelling in lieu of temporary access motor home. Wait a minute, a renewal fee to be paid on the annual basis uh, to retain the exact, uh, in lieu of temporary access. Could, could we just put a friendly amendment in there and, and subject to an inspection? The reason I say that is because in here we don't have, um, it, it doesn't have to be, but if we get the idea that it is, we can come in and have a look if, if, uh, something, if there's somebody else living there or if it's being used as anything else. If we could make the um, just suggestion, and maybe Mr. Backer and Mr. Seffi can help, subject to inspection, um, no, we don't want to have it that it's a requirement for everyone throughout the township, but as as needed or subject to random inspection. Or, Point of order. Can I ask one? where you're putting that in just so I can reference 4.18. Mr. Seffi, can you provide some comment? Because uh, I'm just concerned that if we had an inspection, we're inspecting all of them. But if there definitely is a concern that comes, uh, <coughs> comes to light, that we could go and inspect. So how would that be worded? That's correct, Your Worship. Uh, perhaps as needed. As needed? Sure. Okay. Sure, that's as needed. Yep, okay, yep. so if you want to do that, is there a seconder to that amendment? Oh. Or it's been moved? Okay, so Con Councillor Qualley actually got her hand up. So on the amendment, Councillor Long? Yeah, no, well, an inspection isn't going to necessarily prove who's living there. I mean, you're going to go in as someone living there. How do you know who? You have to see the birth certificate or check their yeah, tattoos I, or what? I, so I, I think they, they should actually probably have, a, have an annual fee and they should probably sign a declaration, right? Uh, that, that would be. I don't think an inspection is going to do it. Okay. I, I the inspection just looking... is as needed, so it's not, you know, and there would be a requirement of the inspection to determine if it's... But when they get their residence. annual renewal fee, surely they must sign a, a declaration. I think that's important, and if people want to fib, but they, I mean, well, hopefully they uh, won't. Mr. Seffi? That will be part of the process, Your Worship, to verify that the, uh, the yeah. conditions under which the... Uh, the approval was granted are, are still existing. So that's already in, these, in this policy. There's no need to add that. So what we're adding now is that if there's an inspection required? Just if it's needed. So in case someone um, is, um, maybe has not been truthful on their 
application that staff have the authority to go in and inspect and that's really all it's there for it's not to not, not to go through i think that's what it's about Thanks. is that i don't think you can okay fair, fair enough councillor uh, richter yes i like councillor long's suggestion and i'd like to second it and i, I would suggest it would be an amendment to 4.1.8 which says a renewal fee to be paid on an annual basis to retain the existing dwelling in lieu of the temporary accessory, accessory mobile home and that a de declaration uh, be signed at that time. Okay, but we're dealing with the amendment right now, so we'll dispose of the, this amendment, and then another amendment can be put on the, on the floor. So if you just want to hold that for now. Uh, Councillor Fox on the amendment. I think that the amendment... Um gives staff some flexibility and I think ultimate flexibility here is important and imperative um, so I will fully support this amendment thank you Councillor Qualley thank you on page three of the report the uh, third paragraph on the bottom it says staff will develop a formalized process that will create a yearly renewal and follow -up process that will include a sworn de declaration stating the existing dwelling retained as a mobile home as temporary dwelling continues to meet the conditions of the original building so, permit. So this so amendment is just yeah, this amendment is just on the inspection right. as needed. Yeah. Okay, anything else? I'll call a question on the amendment. One. Uh, it carries with Councillor Long opposed. And so we're back to the main motion. Um, Councillor Okay, I've got a speaker's list here. I'm gonna go through it. Councillor Fox on the main motion. On the main motion, yeah. I think this is um, overall, it will have a very positive uh, outcome. Um, I think that we have to do our due diligence at the front end um, because um, I think we will actually, staff, staff will be doing with a number of requests here. I don't think that it takes away from the value of a modular home, but it does allow um, families to look at using a secondary dwelling uh, on with very specific conditions. So I think this is a very positive thing and hopefully we'll respond positively to some of the requests we've been getting lately. So thanks to staff. Thank you. Councillor Richter? Um, yes, I'd like to uh, uh, second Councillor Long's earlier motion with regards to stating in the policy and a residency declaration be signed at that time. Uh, no, you're making an amendment on Councillor Long. Okay, Maybe well, so, it was Councillor Long's idea. Okay, but I haven't so. heard the, mo the mover yet, so it's, okay. I'm starting over again. So whoever wants to move it? Okay, okay I'll Rickers. move it as okay. an amendment to 4.1.8. Okay, and seconder? Yeah. So, so Councillor Long seconds. So just saying, let me open up amendment. Councillor Long, if you want to push your button again, or if Councillor Richter wishes to speak to uh, Well, yeah, I okay. just, it, I you know it's in first. the report, but the point is it's not the report that will be consulted in the future, it's the policy, so it needs to be stated in the policy. Okay, okay, thank you. Councillor Long? Well, I, yeah, I think the declaration is important, even more than an inspection. I don't think an inspection is going to solve it for us, but if that's, um, if that's okay with, uh, with the rest of council, why not? So just to clarify, uh, Mr. Sefi, so the amendment is basically embedded in the report. Is it also in the policy already, or this is embedded in the policy? Of, just rather than me reading the whole thing, you might 4. know. 4.1.5. 4.1.5. It's already in the policy? It's in the policy, yeah. Okay. Oh, Mr. Sefi, if you can just confirm that. 4. It is 4. your worship. Okay, thank yes. you. Thanks. So it's already in the policy. Okay, thank you. Councillor Qualley? I was just going to point out that it's okay. all written there. Okay, thank you. Councillor Richter? No, it's not. 4.1.5 is when it's first put into place, where he, they get to keep the secondary home. The issue is the annual renewal fee and declaration that it continues to be occupied by a family member. That's what's missing in the policy, and that's what needs to be added. And I'm suggesting we add it under 1.4.8. 4.1.8. 4.1.8. 1.8, okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, I'm going to call the question on, on that one. one. And it passes with Mayor Froze, Council Quality, Council Sparrow opposed. And we move on to uh, the motion as amended. Councilor Long, you're next on the list. Did no, I'm good, thank you. Okay, so the motion as amended. Uh, any further discussion? Call a question. Carries unanimously. 
Move on to F2, it's the financial report update of September 30th, 2017. Could I have a motion, please? Yes. Councillor Fox, second by Councillor Arneson. Uh, discussion, questions on the financial report? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to call the question on F2. And that carries unanimously. And move on to correspondence. And there is a um, correspondence from the District of Sycamus requesting support for the UBCM resolution regarding the prevention of quagga and zebra mussels in BC lakes. So there's two parts, one that we could receive and also consider submitting a letter in support uh, if council wishes to put the receipt and, the, and also uh, submit a letter of support to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change Strategy. Council Arneson moves it, seconder. Council Long, uh, discussion on, on that. On G1, Councillor Davis. Do we have anything that we, um, like, do we have any um, educational thing, like, the, if we give out a boater's license or a, uh, or if you get a license to drive a boat in the township, or I, maybe I'm on the wrong trail there, yeah. but we something that we, well, Mr. Mr. Backen? We have lots of boaters. The licensing responsibility rests with the province in terms of boats, so we don't have any jurisdiction. We do, from occasion, um, on a yearly basis, sometimes provide topical information about using rivers and lakes and streams, so it may come up in that context, but um, no formal notification. So I, I guess maybe it's not... Rec if, the pr if you go in and you buy a boat, can anybody buy a boat? And then, yeah, you know, it's got to be brought to their attention and not maybe just a little sign where they put it in the lake either, but... Usually the province, through the launching points uh, or the... Uh, the um, Boat licensing program would do something like that. Yeah, but I okay. don't have a boat. I okay. think that's the. Okay. I think that's the meat of this motion is to lobby the or, or get support from the provincial government for this. Councillor Fox. Yeah, just so to Council da da Councillor Davis's question there, at the waste at the truck um, waste scales, out past Bridal Falls, in the summertime, almost on a daily basis, they're out there with a MOTs out there with a, or I don't know which MOE who it is um, with a pull over. anybody with a boat has to pull over and they check the boat for these things it's on the north and the south side of the river thank you Councillor Qualley um, I'm a little concerned about just sending a letter off um, reiterating all of this information because in the funding model at the very bottom of the letter from the mayor of Sycamus it says that um, the BC government will find the funds billions if we lose the battle against mussels as we'll need to manage the problem. This is how we can help fund the prevention now. So there's actually a recommendation here that all out of province users pay at all BC boat ramps. That would include our boat ramp. We don't have a mechanism to charge people out of province. So if we endorse this letter, we're supporting this funding model. I, I'm not prepared to do that. I don't have enough information about this to support a user pay system for all out of province users of boat ramps. Um, so I'm not going to support the sending a letter. I'll support receipt of this, but we didn't, we haven't talked about any of this. So just sending willy nilly support is a bit ridiculous to me. All right. Good point. Thank you. Willy nilly. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to talk about mussels and how to cook them. Council Long. Yeah. I definitely don't want to send a willy nilly letter. So would staff propose a letter that would be sent just supporting the whole concept of keeping the muscles out of the lake. I don't, I agree. I don't want to get into how it's going to be funded. And so, I mean, you wouldn't be telling the province how they're going to fund it anyway. This, these need some support. We need to support our neighbors about the spread of these muscles. They are devastating. So, so the motion is to send, submit a letter of support yes. so we can support without wording it, with their wording and taking council quality's points. Correct. And staff can take so that. So we're not going to use that template. Yeah, as part of the discussion and direction. So we won't use that. It's, we're just supporting the, I'm not going to tell them how to fund it. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Qualley, for that. Any further discussion on G1? I'll call a question. And it carries the Councilor Qualley opposed. And minutes of committee. So H1 is, is uh, adopt the minutes of the uh, seniors advisory and council priorities. Council Fox, seconder, Council Qualley, and uh, Council Richter. Yeah, I just had a question uh, through you to Mr. Back. And um, the report that First West Credit Union is moving its head office to 200 Street and Highway 1, did that come to council? I, I may have missed it. Not yet. Um, not yet, Your Worship. As I recall, there's a transportation issue they have to deal with on the ministry front, and they're, they're working on that. Oh, okay. So is it appropriate then that councillors are reporting on matters that haven't come to council in their co-chair reports? 
The, the difficulty is I think council members can comment on anything that they feel is in the public realm. I don't know what the co-chair report actually was referencing, but if it's in the public realm, there's no limitations on them. They're commenting. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Qualley. Uh, further to those comments, the co-chair's report referenced the PIM that was scheduled for the uh, First West Credit Union, um, the public information meeting that was being held. So I was just advising the committee that the public information meeting was being held if they wanted to attend. Thank you. All right, seeing nothing else, I'm going to call the question on H1. Carries unanimously. H2, there is a... Um, Motion to receive uh, the uh, 2017 Age Friendly Strategy Progress Report and Memorandum for information in accordance with the monitoring required by the Age Friendly Strategy Implementation Plan. Motion. Councilor Qualley, second by Councilor Davis. Councilor Richter. I just wanted to say very impressive report and uh, congratulations to staff for the uh, progress that's clearly being made towards our age friendly strategy. Well done. Thank you. Anything else? Seeing nothing, I'll call the question on H2. Carries unanimously. Is there any other business? Terminate. Motion to terminate by Councillor Long, second by Councillor Davis. All those in favor, show of hands. Opposed? Carried. Thank you.